Things are getting wild about people um, using their cell phones or texting while driving. Some police officers, according to AP, Associated Press, are actually driving in tractor trailers in order to look down from that high vantage point from above to see if the driver is uh, using the cell phone or typing. And they've had uh, other police officers using bicycles really fast, and they can't ticket them fast enough because they're increasing. But the number of cell phone users are, are doubling like every year or something. And they've had cars hit, land in trees. They've had um, side of buildings hit and uh, so on and so forth. And often they can't uh, search them. They say, they, can I see your cell phone? They say, no. They have to get a, a search warrant to do so. And I think one solution, of course, would be the self-driving car. This is uh, rushing to be read. And uh, self-driving car in the speed of superhighway would have uh, not a lane like they're planning, but rather just like rails on pontoons that go on the side of the road onto building new real estate. So it's hugely cheaper than building those dedicated roads, which is the only way they think that self-driving cars will ever be viable until the year like 2060. This is what the experts believe. So the idea that self-driving cars are going to drive the superhighway is not really that much more going to be viable for a long time. So there's no relief from it by that method. People are dying of these cell phone crashes. And so self-driving car of that sense with the uh, rails, it's suspended from rails and it has uh, wings. So it goes at 200 miles per hour. You type in for your, your dish, your hot dish, and it sails to you. In 30 seconds, you've got all your all your shopping done if you type in. So I think this is the real future of self-driving cars as it relates to this idea in the near future because uh, the other methods are only too expensive. And so this would also be above the pedestrians, which in the city cause half the accidents. You may know that uh, automobile accidents are down by a fourth in 10 years because of computers. Computerization is making the car safer. This reminds me of like trains in the 1800s. They invented better brakes, better safety methods. And what did the train engineers do? They just sped up and had the same amount of crashes. So too, if we have these uh, cars, part of the reason people may be doing this is because they say, well, the computer will solve it. That's good enough. But it's still against the law. And some drivers are using what's called the, the driver's prayer where they're looking down to hide their cell phone from the police so that they can't see. And then there's this blue light glowing in their face. So I don't know if they're a smurf. <laughs> Barney would, uh, you know, he's the third highest paid entertainment, but this is like silly the ladies watching her YouTube videos while she's um, at the stoplight. I think uh, the solution for the short term before we might reach the railed wings would be to use sensors to sense Who's making the call? If there's no signal coming from that phone, that car, then it's not a car phone. It's, it's got foam. And so what they could do is um, the sensor, and that sensor would find out who's using it. And it goes back to the cell phone tower, and the cell phone company, by law, might have to cut off the use of that cell phone during the time when they're in the car unsafely. I think this could solve it. And also, we can say this is a form of internet addiction, I think. I would think it's a form of internet addiction. They say they see their phone ring, they just have to answer it. Well, really, they don't. They didn't before for all those years. I remember when I was a kid, they had the cars, the rich and famous, and they always had their cell phone. But it was like a brick. They got exercise, just they got muscle just lifting it. You know? So I think that uh, you know this is more and more, the access is easy to reach. I think it's a form of internet overuse. So if you think of this, we don't just think of it as the car. People would just say, oh, we can't do that. Their brain's going to hurt when they give them no access in the car as well as everywhere else. They want it everywhere because they want it because it's not art, it's artificially overstimulating their brain. One in five are shown in research to say they use the internet almost constantly. So I think uh, there's more to this than, than the other. And so uh, as well as limiting the use of the cell phones in the cars by the internet service provider or the phone company by law, I think another improvement would be to Educate people about the value of timer boxes. You can get these timer boxes and just rest automatically. You get in the habit of resting, and it no longer seems to be so resting. You know, they go to jail for you know, typing in like $500. It's not even worth it. And they're hurting other people. You know, they crash. The timer boxes you can get on my Amazon for like $55. They're quite effective for reducing overuse of any type, really. 
You just put your mouse or your machine in the pipe out, and you're finished. You, you just take a break for two days. You plan ahead what you're going to do. It's changing the way we remember the web is. So when we actually are without all this uh, artificial stuff, where you can't see the forest or the trees, you know, it's going to, it's like shrinking your gray matter. So this is really a viable method of uh, solving this problem by both, you know, reducing the access while they're in the car and also by reducing the general idea that they just have to have the web anyhow because it's shrinking their brain and I hope uh, you have more than enough gray matter to achieve this, but uh, also, of course, common sense would be involved. You're going to damage your eyes, you damage your wrists. These are the fastest rising cause of overuse injuries, so you want to solve for uh, why and also what, and uh, I hope you uh,